How's it going everyone? Update 6.1.0 is right around the corner and there are a lot of significant changes coming to Dead by Daylight. So in this video I'm going to explain how I believe these changes are going to actually affect the gameplay. Although this video is going to have a negative tone, I do want to say that regardless of any of my predictions, changes to Dead by Daylight are absolutely needed for better or worse and I'm happy we're getting them. I want to start with the new solo queue experience as I think they're going to get the short end of the stick in this update. Pretty much every change is either a buff to killer or a buff to survive with friends. Off the record or to a much smaller degree, base get borrowed time will help a bit with solo queue in theory but as I'll explain a bit later in the video, these changes won't help with the new way the game is going to be played. The perks that rewarded killers the most for pressuring generators and going for multiple chases are dead. Not just nerfed, they are dead. Even if you see them shortly after the update, killers will drop them once they realize just how weak they actually are now. Pop goes the weasel, unless you use this on a gen that's nearly finished, you're not getting much value out of it at all. By the time you walk to a generator and kick it, good survivors will have already made up the time on other gens. On average, you're going to be getting about 10% instant regression on a kick with Pop Goes the Weasel unless the gen is about 99% finished. Hex Ruin now has 100% regression, which is one fourth of the speed that one single survivor does a generator by themselves. That's way too weak to justify being a hex totem. Next up, Barbecue and Chili now no longer gives you any reward for hooking different survivors, unlike We're Gonna Live Forever that now rewards survivors with an endurance status effect for each token they earn. Check out this video from Kaylight that shows the regression of Overcharge and Overcharge stacked with Call of Brine. From this example, there's no reason to stack both perks as you're completely relying on the survivors abandoning the generator entirely. At best, killers will use this for 3 gen strats, which is the opposite of exciting gameplay. Survive with friends will easily be able to communicate around this, whereas solo queue players will not. Okay, well then, what perks will killers use if all the regression perks are subpar now? Well, I see them running Corrupt Intervention, Deadlock, No Way Out, and probably one chase perk associated with the killer they're playing, Forced Penance to punish body blocking, uh, buffed Thanatophobia, or save the best for last. That's because survivors now have a lot more endurance status effects at their disposal. Base kit borrow time for 5 seconds, borrow time for 15 seconds, off the record for possibly 80 seconds if it stays how it is. Dead Heart is now borrowed time in a bottle. We're gonna live forever, and that's only the new stuff. All of the old stuff is still there. In Behavior's mind, this is going to lead to less tunneling and camping. However, I'm predicting the exact opposite will be true. Who is going to be punished more because of these additions to the game? A camping tunneling killer or a killer trying to go for 12 hooks? The camper tunneler will immediately hit the survivor who gets unhooked to take away their endurance, chase them down, eat their new 3 second baby decisive strike if they have it, and boom it's a 3v1. Killers going for 12 hooks will constantly be harassed by endurance effects from survivors who aren't being tunneled insanely fast heals, and no perks that reward them for multiple hooks. 12 hook killers will turn into camper tunnelers during this meta. They can only be teabagged and clicked at so many times while trying to play nice. Now you might be asking if camping is really an effective strategy. Won't the survivors just do the generators and leave? It's a good question, but after recently doing our experimental face camper tournament of champions, we found that camping is incredibly powerful. We went on a 46 game win streak with the total win loss ratio being 76 wins to 6 losses. And the 46 game win streak never ended. We found the right builds to make it near impossible for the survivors to deal with it. Add in slower generators, weaker decisive strike, buffed thanatophobia, and you have a recipe for disaster. So we circle back to solo queue. Killers have no idea who they're playing against, so they prepare for the worst. As a solo queue player, you will be suffering for the sins of Survive with Friends. In turn, that will make more players want to play in Survive with Friends, just like skill-based matchmaking did, which will just keep escalating everything. One thing as a content creator I'm already annoyed about is the, let's call it endurance backseating. When survivors are swarming you with multiple endurance stacks, it's nearly impossible to make reads about it. I never had an issue with this in Dead by Daylight before. It was pretty easy to read what the survivors were trying to do. 
when you're dealing with so many different timers perks you can no longer process it if you don't believe me i hope when you get a chance to experience this for yourself it humbles you to the insanity of it so every time someone in chat says oh they had off the record or borrow time or we're gonna live forever it might be one thing to be able to see it from a viewer's perspective, but while you're actually playing the game and trying to micromanage everything, it, it's overload. You can't do it. But so if you're getting sworn by survivors, that means only one survivors doing generators. True, but that's all they need. It's all they ever needed, really. Sweaty squads know you rush gens as hard as you can early on, and it's extremely difficult for the killer to ever catch back up. A more skillful version of this already exists in DBD right now. For example, survivors in a Survive with Friends love to go down under pallets, hover around with flashlights and sabo hooks, things to just delay your objective. It was already frustrating to deal with this, but now it'll be even more stressful. All of this motion points towards more camping and tunneling. It's easier and much more rewarding. The icing on the cake will be that the response to all of this will be, oh my god, look, they made whiny killer mains overpowered and now all they do is just camp and tunnel. What salty losers. That's why I'm making this video ahead of time. Here's the math. 2 plus 2 equals 4. The vast majority of killers know camping, tunneling, slugging is boring. The reason the majority of them do it anyway is because they have been conditioned to do it. Call me Choice Stradamus if you'd like. I know I would. But those are my predictions. I know they're a bit pessimistic, so obviously I hope I'm completely wrong and everything goes great. But as long as map design stays how it is, I think these will always be issues. Now, just like with Onryo and Dredge, I said that high level players would label them as too weak to play, but I still enjoy playing them a lot. The same logic applies to this update. The fact that a survivor can't get a full sprint burst across the map for free every time they get hit is by far my favorite change to the game. So personally, I won't be camping or tunneling this entire mid chapter. I want to give these changes a true test before falling back on more boring strategies to win. Yet again, I'm predicting very few other killer mains are going to do the same thing. Fingers crossed for an off the record nerf, Thanks so much for watching, and as always, have a good one.